Last year during our South Island trip, the Uraria River crossing close to Geraldine was added as a little bonus bit of four-wheel driving. Unfortunately, the river was flowing real strong and the group made the decision to rather not brave the waters and rather backtrack and take the bridge over the river. So on my trip today, I thought as a little warm-up, why not? Let's do the Urari River crossing. I do the crossing here. Um, Riverbeds super, super, super soft. So I just did the first bit and thought, ooh, I'm not so sure. Um, I'm by myself. I could probably make it, but you know, I'm not here to get stuck in the Urari River. I'm actually on my way to much better and bigger things. So as you can see, this is just here in front of us is where I've been through just now the tracks not as well defined as what it was a year ago oh well first time I'm using my travel buddy in anger got some uh, little I think these are croissants with little sausages in them bloody hell awesome and on to my next stop Burke's Pass Burke's Pass is a mountain pass and at its base, a small town is located by the same name. The pass was discovered in 1855 by the early settlers and used as a route leading into the vast Mackenzie country. This was an alternative route to the Mackenzie Pass, which the notorious, let's say, alleged sheep stealer James Mackenzie had used to take his sheep into the Otago fields. The village was the last outpost of civilization in those days and has remained relatively unchanged since, giving us a beautiful glimpse into how people used to live in the 1800s. The early pioneers who came to grace the sheep in the area built a tiny wooden church, opened in 1872, now the oldest union church in New Zealand. My name is Marcus Wyatt. Join me as I share my passion for four-wheel drives and traveling to the remotest parts of New Zealand. If you enjoy these videos, please support me by buying me a coffee on Patreon. Join the team of explorers now. So here we go. Officially, I'm on the road. It takes me out to where the tracks start. Just need to kind of concentrate on the road a little bit. Um, yeah, so exciting times. We're gonna go um, hit Macaulay's track first and um, see how that goes. Hopefully I'll get to the to the hut before it's dark tonight. Don't know how much the, the track's actually changed. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. some air out of these tires and um, try 
and get on our way, eh? We'll be here at the start of Macaulay's track. So, pretty excited. Okay, so guys, I'm quickly going to put some veggies on, so by the time I get out there, I can have cooked veggies. We'll get some potatoes, got some onion. I'm not uh, a massive big cook, I just, whatever's easiest works for me. Last time I was up here, it took me, took the group, oh, you know, I think it was about two hours to get up there. Just spice it up a bit. Some canola oil. Some balsamic vinegar. And there you go. Hopefully I'll have a, a good meal tonight. Leave it in there. Put it on for two hours and let's see how it comes out. So, we just started the Macaulay's track, I'm just crossing Macaulay River now, um, water seems to not be too high, we'll see when we get to the main track. Um, I just want to quickly walk this, um, it looks a little bit deep. deep
As you drive up the Macaulay Hut track, you know, you're just kind of following the track, the main track, and then you get to this point, and you think to yourself, wow, where's the track going? Oh, I might be able to go through there. That looks like, oh, that looks pretty deep, if you ask me. Yeah, now that looks very deep. The trick here is pretty much to just go a little bit back. It's a lot more clearer now than it was 12 months ago when I was here the first time. It took us about 20 minutes to figure this out. But because all the GPS maps will tell you to go straight there. And um, but if you look here you can actually see there the tracks turning and crossing here so the trick is let's just see oh yeah you can see some tracks see how soft this is mm, pretty soft but at this point if you actually look at the the river flow you can pretty much see the whole bottom all the way across you could even go a little bit higher I would actually go straight over but you could go a little bit higher and then cross there and then come back you can on the other side see some tracks as people has crossed I think that's where I'm going to cross. Thank <laughs> you. 
question. Oh well, let's do... I think I'm gonna have more luck with right. Anyway, let's see. Looks a little bit more... Not as... Rocky as um, the other side, the left side. The left side is going quite close towards the valley floor, uh, valley um, edge. So um, I don't want to go there, and the river is running on that side. So I don't think I'm going to have much luck here. This this seems to be a lot more flat. And it seems to be making a lot more progress. This is Macaulay Hut. This is the back side of the, the hut. Absolutely gorgeous place. Here's where I'm gonna sleep tonight. Just need to set up my tent. Oh no, my veggies are doing. Anyway, let's go for a walk. Mokoli Hut's one of those places that actually is very well set up. There's gas, there's running water, there's wood as you can see. So the place is very well stocked. This is what it looks inside. It's got beautiful bunk beds with mattresses. Some of the memorabilia. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful stove, um, washing up facilities, gas stove, actually works, it's gas, it's, as well there's actually power, this can be seen up there, and you've got this beautiful table here, and of course a guest house, guest book. These are the people that I'll be sharing this place with. They passed me earlier, anyway. And that's the views that you get at Macaulay Hut. It's absolutely gorgeous. So here we have dinner. Very nice steak and veggies. Woohoo! 